These children are truly pitiable. From birth, they were tagged with numbers by soldiers and sent to military camps, embarking on a hellish life. By the age of six, they were forced to watch the fights between wild boars and hunting dogs, embedding the law of the jungle deep into their tender minds. By the age of nine, they had to complete complex intelligence tests within 30 seconds. By the age of 12, they were subjected to intense physical training every day. And for those children who fell behind due to poor physical condition, their superiors would show no mercy and execute them on the spot with a gun. By the age of 16, after rigorous selection, they underwent brutal live-fire target practice. In non-essential situations, they would spare civilians. But in special cases, even civilians had to be eliminated without a trace of sympathy. The 17th year marked the end of the devilish training. Those who survived had their names and numbers engraved on their faces, officially transforming into killing machines. They were collectively known as soldier, for their sole purpose was to fight. In their eyes, apart from slaughter, Emotions had long been extinguished. The purpose behind creating these emotionless killing machines was to ensure victory in future interstellar wars. As part of the so-called Soldier Man project by the U.S. military, in the 38th year, led by Todd 3465, the Soldier Man had been through hundreds of battles, eliminated all enemies, and won the brutal Six City War. During the harsh Moscow incident, they had to annihilate everyone, even if the enemy had hostages, showing no mercy whatsoever. This is the 40th year. Even the distant planet of Argentina bears their footprints. Todd 3465 stands out as the most exceptional among them, battling from Earth to outer space through countless brutal campaigns, yet he remains undefeated. All data indicate that he is a perfect fighting machine, consistently topping the soldier man charts. Church looks upon these veterans with great satisfaction. However, rapidly advancing technology has trained a new batch of future soldiers, even Todd 3465 who has never been defeated, is finally facing the dawn of his end. The newly appointed Colonel Meekum confidently highlights the advantages of the new soldiers. The veterans were selected through genetic screening, while the new soldiers are genetically modified muscle men, trained in more scientific methods. In terms of endurance, physical strength, or reflexes, they are superior, thoroughly outclassing the veterans. Colonel Meekum's intention is to replace Todd 3465 and his fellow old soldiermen with these new devil warriors to continually enhance the army's combat effectiveness. However, Church disagrees, arguing that the veterans are battle-hardened and experienced, whereas these new soldiers have never even seen combat. How effective can brute strength be? When Colonel Meekum sees the skepticism, he suggests a practical comparison. To everyone's astonishment, in a high-speed shooting test, the new soldiers not only handle their weapons with stability but also achieve a 99% hit rate, and thoroughly outperforming the veterans in physical fitness. Despite this, Church remains unconvinced and proposes a test of endurance next. Church sends out the strongest among them, Todd 3465, to compete, to demonstrate the new soldier's capability. Colonel Meekum allows the veteran Todd 3465 to start running 20 minutes ahead, then casually sends out the new soldier. Although Todd 3465's stamina is remarkable, the new soldier's speed is terrifyingly fast. It doesn't take long for him to catch up with Todd 3465 and finish the 15 kilometers with a significant advantage. After the run, Todd 3465 is drenched in sweat and gasping for breath, while the new soldier seems as if he hadn't exerted any effort at all. Still, Church stubbornly argues that this proves nothing, demanding that the old and new soldiers climb a chain to engage in a real fight. Church wanted Todd 3465 to teach the new soldier a lesson. Colonel Meekum, thinking the new soldier too formidable for a one-on-one, -on -one, suggested pitting three veterans against one new soldier to determine the superior. Unexpectedly, even in a three-against-one scenario, the veterans were no match for Kane 607, the new soldier. Indeed, the new devil training method made these new soldiers invincible. In front of the young and strong physique of the new soldiers, the veterans were completely outclassed in every aspect. After the confrontation, one veteran fell from a height and died on the spot. Another veteran fell and was knocked unconscious, while Todd 3465 was left severely injured, barely alive. Although Kane 607, the new soldier, lost an eye to Todd 3465 during the fight, he ultimately won. Kane 607 successfully replaced the long-serving veterans, though the remaining veterans were filled with sorrow. They had to admit the new soldier's strength. Even Church had to concede, while Colonel Meekum took the opportunity to scold the injured new soldier, criticizing him for losing an eye, implying a loss in combat value. His words were a veiled insult, suggesting that the defeated veterans were even more useless. He then shot the unconscious veteran dead and declared all three as accidental deaths. Todd 3465 mistaken for dead due to his unconscious state, narrowly escaped death. 
Subsequently, they were discarded by the government as waste, sent to a distant planet aboard a garbage disposal spaceship. This planet, known as the Garbage Planet, showcased the future humanity's capability to dedicate an entire planet to waste disposal. However, the severely injured Todd 3465 suddenly woke up, looking around at the corpses of his two comrades and his surroundings. Momentarily confused about his situation, a piercing alarm suddenly sounded as the doors of the garbage transport ship were opened, and Todd 3465, along with his teammates, were dumped onto the planet like trash. The first time Todd 3465 saw a woman, he stared at her with a greedy gaze. The woman, sensing his stare, did not get angry but instead shyly lowered her head. However, she was unaware that this man had not seen a beautiful woman in 40 years. Todd 3465, a top soldier who had fought in numerous galaxy wars, had been subjected to strict military indoctrination from a young age, with his only purpose in life being to fight. Despite earning countless honors and facing death many times during his service, the organization chose to adopt new genetic technologies to create a batch of improved new soldiers, physically far superior to his generation of veterans, leading to their ruthless elimination. They were abandoned by the Empire's military organization they had served, with their lives and deaths deemed inconsequential, dumped on the garbage planet like space debris. This was a cruel trampling and insult to humanity. Fortunately, Todd 3465 miraculously survived, silently watching the departing ship. He was filled with hatred yet forced to confront his new reality. Looking around, he faced a desperate situation. All he could see were mountains of garbage, a planet specifically used by rulers of various planets to dump the remnants of war, with extremely harsh natural conditions. Unexpectedly, he found that humans were living in such an environment, prompting him to quickly climb down from the garbage pile to investigate. In the distance, there was a scrapped giant spaceship, with a rope fence leading towards it. Observing the severely damaged environment around him and an approaching sandstorm, Todd 3465's immediate task was to figure out how to survive. He clung tightly to the fence in front of him as a hurricane swept through, carrying a whirlwind of sand. His hands bled from gripping the fence too hard. Yet, with his exceptional physical condition, Todd 3465 managed to endure through the ordeal. After surviving the terrifying storm, Todd 3465 cautiously followed the fence forward, realizing it was deliberately placed to guide people through the sandstorms. He then came upon a makeshift graveyard constructed from garbage, indicating signs of human presence ahead. Entering the spaceship, Todd 3465 found what resembled a secret underground camp, where he spotted a few humans. Years of combat had made him extremely cautious. He ducked down to spy on them, but a sudden gust of wind caught him off guard, causing him to fall heavily from the stone steps to the ground, without any protection. His injuries worsened, and he spat out blood before fainting. Todd 3465's arrival instantly plunged the inhabitants into panic. They urgently convened a community meeting for hundreds of years. This planet had not been visited by outsiders. And now, a soldier had fallen from the sky. Everyone was curious about how he arrived. Just then, Jimmy Pig returned from patrol, reporting no sight of other soldiers or ships in the vicinity. Having finally escaped the clutches of war and rebuilt their homes here, the residents feared his presence would disrupt their peace and unanimously agreed to expel the unwelcome visitor. However, the kind-hearted Hawkins believed that since the stranger was unarmed and severely injured, they should provide aid in the spirit of saving lives. Consequently, she decided to leave Todd 3465 in the care of Mace and his family. Hawkins' compassion ultimately spared the refugee camp from an impending disaster. Later, the injured Todd 3465 was taken in by Mace's family. When Sandra, Mace's wife, first saw Todd 3465, she was frightened by the names of various battles tattooed across his shoulder. Still, she carefully administered medicine to him and tended to his wounds with great care. Sandra informed her husband Mace about the situation, and he understood what his wife was worried about. However, Mace said he could understand Todd 3465 after all. He's a soldier. The next day, Todd 3465 was awakened by the noise outside. When he went to check, he found Mace and his family playing and laughing together. Todd 3465, who had been isolated from society and family since birth, was puzzled by their behavior. Seeing Todd 3465's cold expression, Mace instantly became nervous, thinking he had disturbed his rest, and quickly apologized, saying they were just playing with the child. Todd 3465's face remained stoic, so Mace tried to please him by showing him a handmade cane, but to Todd 3465, such an action seemed like a preparatory move for an attack, and his expression turned fierce. Mace immediately demonstrated how the cane was used, and the family felt Todd 3465's imposing presence for the first time. At dinner, Todd 3465 sat upright, devouring his food in a manner that was a habit formed in the military. 
ingrained in his genes, thinking he was very hungry. Mace gave his portion to Todd 3465, but this kind gesture drew hostility towards Todd 3465 from others. A man who didn't like him asked if he was a deserter. Todd 3465 immediately stood up. No, sir, then why aren't you with your unit? I was replaced by better soldiers, he replied. Later, Todd 3465 learned why the residents were hostile towards soldiers. These people were not the original inhabitants of the garbage planet but had fled Earth to escape the war. During a space journey, their ship crashed here and they've been unknown since. When ships started dumping garbage on the planet, they tried to signal for help, to no avail. Perhaps those ships were unmanned, and them settled on the garbage planet. Fortunately, no one wanted to invade this place. Todd 3465 remained silent, but this did not mean he was unmoved. When he saw Sandra in the warm sunlight, her clothing slightly transparent, he felt a momentary heartbeat, a sensation he had never experienced before. Meanwhile, Colonel Meekum, having replaced the soldiers with his devil warriors, was smugly satisfied with his achievement. Coincidentally, the place Colonel Meekum chose for the new soldiers' real-world training was the garbage planet. He thought the miners and refugees there could serve as enemies for the devil warriors to practice on, as the spaceship quickly made its way towards the garbage planet. Todd 3465 was learning how to grow vegetables with Sandra. Unfortunately, he discovered that aside from fighting, he was almost incapable of anything else. Suddenly, a venomous snake appeared and moved towards Sandra. Before Todd 3465 could react, Sandra had already swiftly decapitated it and then patiently reminded Todd 3465 that such snakes were common on the garbage planet and very deadly to women and children. Her son had once been bitten by a snake, resulting in his inability to speak. Then, Sandra handed a seedling to Todd 3465, asking him to plant it himself. Todd 3465 who had never smiled or seen such a beautiful smile directed at him, gently planted the seedling. At that moment, he felt as if he had found his roots. That day, Todd 3465 joined everyone in scavenging for garbage because everything in the village was collected from there, turning waste into treasure. Suddenly, a strong wind struck, and everyone hurried to secure themselves to the fence made of chains. Jimmy Pig was caught off guard and swept up by the wind, about to be thrown into a rolling drum with everyone unable to pull him back despite their efforts. At the crucial moment, Todd 3465 acted, saving Jimmy Pig with ease, and everyone was overjoyed at Jimmy Pig's narrow escape. However, Todd 3465 was then seen fiddling with Mace's submachine gun, making everyone nervous. Mace cautiously approached to retrieve his gun when a spaceship passed overhead. Mace explained it was a garbage disposal spaceship that came about every half a month and hoped Todd 3465 would return the gun to him. Jimmy Pig quickly got up and loudly thanked Todd 3465, but received only a blank stare in response. Initially, people were wary of him, but as time passed, they realized that Todd 3465, though expressionless and taciturn, harbored no ill intentions, even though he always stared intently at Sandra. Mace noticed but trusted his wife. Despite the harsh living conditions and environment, Todd 3465 found an unprecedented happiness here. He began to learn about everyday life, slowly discovering his humanity and realizing that life offered many beautiful experiences beyond charging into battle and fighting bravely. Sandra is truly beautiful, and from his gaze, it's evident that Todd 3465 has fallen in love with Sandra. However, seeing Todd 3465 silent and preoccupied every day, even forgetting his own physical pain, Sandra couldn't comprehend what this soldier had gone through. It's hard to imagine the pain of someone whose only emotions left are fear and discipline. The first time he was embraced by a kind woman, Todd 3465 couldn't adapt to the sensation, his body trembling with excitement, forcing Sandra to let go, her heart aching for him, but deep inside. Something within Todd 3465 seemed to awaken. As Christmas approached, the residents invited Todd 3465 to join a grand celebration party. However, just when Sandra thought Todd 3465 could gradually emerge from his fear, he became more distressed. To him, the festivity resembled the battles and skirmishes he had witnessed all his life. Anything slightly stimulating brought back the horrors of war. The battlefield scenes replayed in his mind, driving him to escape the crowd and vent his emotions through boxing. Despite his hands bleeding, each punch reminded him of the indelible sins, the images of him shooting the innocent. One day, Jimmy Pig, whom he had saved, came to thank him with a beautiful scarf for saving his life. But the disoriented Todd 3465 mistook him for an enemy sneaking up on the battlefield. A tragedy was narrowly avoided when Todd 3465 regained his senses in time. However, looking up, he saw dozens of pairs of eyes staring at him. Everyone was scared, and Hawkins silently considered the idea of expelling him. Mace also began to reconsider whether they could keep him here. Once people become wary of you, everything you do can be misunderstood. Until one day, 
Todd 3465 woke from a nightmare again. Upon waking, he saw Mace's son sharing his favorite toy with him, though the boy couldn't speak. He used the toy to tell Todd 3465 to let go of his burdens. Just as he was about to go back, he saw a small green snake, which is why boys can't talk. His eyes filled with hatred. Anyone else might have killed it in anger. But Todd 3465 chose not to. He threw a shoe to distract it and tried to teach Mace's son how to protect himself. The boy, confused and unsure what to do, watched as the snake lunged at him. Todd 3465 quickly grabbed the snake, not to kill it, but to encourage the boy to deal with it himself. However, this act was misunderstood by Mace who arrived in time to see it. Furious, he killed the snake with a rod. They couldn't comprehend Todd 3465's actions and rebuked him for being inhumane and nearly causing his son's death. After this incident, Sandra resolved to no longer vouch for Todd 3465 and brought him before the community council. Given Todd 3465's past behavior and the general fear among the residents, who believed his military training had twisted his mind beyond the point of integrating into their family-oriented community, it was unanimously decided that he should leave for everyone's safety. Yet Todd 3465 felt profound distress. Despite his good intentions, he struggled to express himself. He had developed feelings of love towards Sandra fatherly affection for the boy, and a sense of friendship with Mace. Being rejected by everyone felt like a second betrayal to him. With nowhere to go, Todd 3465 returned to the initial garbage heap, the once most fearsome war machine on earth, now abandoned and weeping in a corner. First, he was discarded by the army he served for decades. Second, his silence and inability to express himself, shaped by years of military training, led to his misunderstanding and rejection by the refugees on the garbage planet. If the first abandonment filled him with pain and resentment, the second left him with aimlessness, desolation, and a despairing sense of hopelessness. The man who had been cold-blooded for 40 years was not without emotion. In this moment, the iron-hard toughness of this man revealed a softer side. However, Colonel Meekum's spaceship was also nearing the garbage planet. In the dead of night, while Mace and his wife were sleeping soundly, a venomous snake crawled onto their bed, ready to strike, but was caught by the tail and killed with a boot by Mace's son, who had always been afraid of snakes. Awakened, Mace and his wife were surprised to see their son act so bravely against the snake, realizing they had misunderstood Todd 3465. He hadn't put their son in danger. Instead, his actions were the correct way to teach. Strength is needed to protect oneself and peace requires power to maintain. Mace quickly dressed and decided to find Todd 3465, disregarding any danger. Following the rope, he found Todd 3465 in an abandoned pipe. Lost in thought, Mace apologized for what he had said and tried to seek Todd 3465's forgiveness. But Todd 3465's attention was drawn to the sky, where a huge warship was slowly passing overhead and landing not far from them. Mace waved for help. But Todd 3465 stopped him, recognizing it not as a transport but a military vessel loaded with weapons. Indeed, as the ship landed, two armored vehicles and a group of fully armed soldiers emerged. This troop, led by Colonel Meekum for live combat training, had orders to kill any living being on sight. Seeing this, Todd 3465 quickly led Mace back to the refugee camp to warn everyone. Under Colonel Meekum's command, they marched towards the village, and the occupants of the armored vehicles happened to be Todd 3465's arch nemesis. At that moment, Kane 607 spotted the fleeing duo and decisively pressed the fire button, followed by a barrage of gunfire, caught in Kane 607's relentless attack. Mace was blown off one of his legs and lay on the ground in agony. Seeing the approaching war vehicle, Todd 3465 forcefully dragged Mace to safety with a crude grab to his collar, leveraging their rich combat experience. They successfully hid in the blind spots of detection, though Todd 3465 managed to save Mace. Mace knew his end was near, with the armored vehicles entering the village. He pleaded with Todd 3465 to ensure the safety of his wife and child. After making his request, Mace succumbed to his injuries from excessive blood loss, heartbroken. Todd 3465's fierce gaze returned. The monitoring officer aboard the ship reported the discovery of refugees on the planet to church, who decided to immediately halt the operation. However, the inhumane Colonel Meekum saw this as a perfect opportunity for training, intending to eliminate all refugees as enemies and establish a new monitoring station on the site. Following orders, the new soldiers drove the armored vehicle to the entrance of the refugee camp. Unaware of the true intentions, Hawkins attempted to calm the residents and went out to negotiate peacefully with the newcomers. However, these soldiers, trained in killing from a young age, only understood absolute obedience to orders and did not entertain any negotiations, realizing too late that peace could not be negotiated. Hawkins was blasted away, causing the villagers into panic, who then returned fire, facing the well-equipped, 
armored soldiers, the refugees were easily scattered and forced to flee. Colonel Meekham believed that dealing with these refugees would only require dispatching a three-person flamethrower squad. Fully armed, the trio stormed into the underground camp, conducting a carpet search and shooting any unarmed civilians they encountered. The flames they sprayed turned the place into a living hell with residents screaming in agony. In this dire moment, Todd 3465 descended like a deity of war. No one could match his ferocity in battle. The refugees, who had previously disdained him, were astonished by his prowess. Need a hand, friend? With a flamethrower in hand, the second new soldier aimed to corral Sandra and her child to burn them together. Unexpectedly, Todd 3465 suddenly appeared beside Sandra and the child, the last new soldier, hearing the commotion, arrived prepared and unleashed a barrage of bullets, reveling in the thrill of battle he hadn't experienced in a while. Just as he was indulging in his unstoppable spree, his machine gun jammed. At that moment, Todd 3465 reappeared, precisely hitting the propeller and ending his life in a bizarre manner. Kane 607, seeking an update on the situation, received only an angry growl from Todd 3465 over the radio, leaving him momentarily confused about the presence of a monster. Initially puzzled, Colonel Meekham soon realized the growl was a provocation. He was astonished that a group of insignificant refugees had eliminated his carefully trained devil warriors. His subordinates suggested deploying everyone, but having witnessed the malicious prowess, Colonel Meekham became cautious, fearing the opponents might possess significant military strength. Seeing Colonel Meekham in distress, it was suggested to withdraw the soldiers and wait until nightfall to return. With all heavy weaponry and level the area with rocket fire from a safe distance, heeding this advice, Colonel Meekham ordered a retreat. The residents suffered heavy casualties but used the soldiers' retreat to recuperate for half a day. Meanwhile, Todd 3465 was organizing the equipment from the three new soldiers. Aware that this was only the first wave of attack, Mesa's son approached Todd 3465, inquiring about his father's absence. Todd 3465's silence and the look in his eyes conveyed to Sandra that the child's father might have been lost. His silence served as confirmation, seeing the widow and orphan. Todd 3465, who once didn't know what he was fighting for, now found a cause. His numb heart had developed friendships and love here. Determined to protect his loved ones and the villagers, Todd 3465 prepared for battle. After efficiently organizing various combat gears, Sandra inquired about the enemy's numbers to strategize the villagers' defense. Todd 3465 informed her of the 17 genetically modified soldiers remaining. Sandra's eyes were full of worry. One against 17 was an impossible task. Fearful for Todd 3465's safety and the potential for his non-return, Todd 3465 dominates his way out of the base, and this time he's fighting for his life. In the dead of night, two heavy armored vehicles launched another assault but were ambushed by Todd 3465 hiding in the shadows, who swiftly eliminated two gunners. Thus began a showdown between the old soldier and the new soldiers. After receiving the order, the two armored vehicles immediately split up to flank the remaining refugees. At the same time, they dispatched infantry to conduct a thorough search for the person launching the sneak attacks, inadvertently giving Todd 3465 the opportunity to pick them off one by one. Using the cover of darkness and the complex environment, Todd 3465 easily dragged one soldier into a pit of venomous snakes, his screams alerting the other soldiers. They began firing flares and meticulously searched every corner. But such efforts were futile against an experienced war king like Todd 3465. A soldier turned around only to face Todd 3465, who then eliminated another soldier before silently disappearing into the water. Hearing the noise, two other soldiers rushed over, indiscriminately attacking with flamethrowers to clear all corners. However, they were unexpectedly taken down by Todd 3465, who was hiding in the water. Despite the physical and numerical disadvantages, the old soldier's combat experience turned the tables on the new soldiers. Thus, the new soldiers fell one by one to the cold and brave old warrior under such circumstances, while others were concentrating on hunting the elusive target. Suddenly, two machine guns started firing madly nearby. Finally, they seemed to have found their target. The soldiers returned fire and closed in, but the distant machine gun fire continued unabated, daring to confront the mass attack of the new soldiers head-on. However, when they, at the cost of several lives, finally reached the location, they discovered it was a trap. It was too late to retreat. Todd 3465 promptly detonated the explosives, killing a large number instantly, with only a few surviving. But a sandstorm was approaching. Todd 3465, having noticed it in advance, secured himself to a metal frame. The metal frame held firm against the storm, while the new soldiers, unfamiliar with the planet's harsh conditions, were caught off guard and perished in the storm. The loss of so many soldiers caused Colonel Meekham's blood pressure to spike. Church, taking pleasure in the misfortune, 
remarked that the so-called Devil Warriors Meekum was proud of seen to have only enhanced muscles, not brains, they passed all the tests, but with zero real combat experience, they couldn't compare to the old soldiers. Now, with the infantry nearly wiped out, only two heavy armored vehicles remained. Aside from the spaceship, Todd 3465 descended from the sky, eliminating the machine gunners one by one before throwing grenades into an armored vehicle, killing the driver and seizing control of it. Meanwhile, Kane 607, driving the other vehicle, reached the refugee camp and began a furious assault on the villagers, following their ruthless principle of kill or be killed. The refugees, barely recovered from their previous ordeal, were scattered by the barrage, with many quickly succumbing to injuries or death. Just then, Kane 607 noticed an approaching vehicle and, mistaking it for reinforcements, ordered it to assist in the attack. Unbeknownst to him, the vehicle was piloted by Todd 3465. With aggressive maneuvers, Todd 3465 rammed into Kane 607's vehicle, effectively ending all communication with the genetically enhanced soldiers aboard the ship. Colonel Meekum was dumbfounded. His costly and meticulously trained devil warriors were all dead. He ranted, questioning how many enemies there were, speculating there must be at least a division's worth. Unable to estimate the enemy's numbers and acknowledging that even the new soldiers couldn't defeat them, he conceded that deploying veterans would be futile. The only remaining option was to send a few veterans to plant a nuclear bomb capable of destroying the planet. Todd 3465 hurried back to the refugee camp to organize an evacuation, aware that a frustrated Colonel Meekum might destroy the planet. He planned to lead the refugees in seizing the spaceship. However, Kane 607 was not dead but severely wounded. After injecting himself with a comrade's syringe, he felt a surge of power and angrily blocked Todd 3465 in the refugee's path, seeking vengeance for a past humiliation, setting the stage for an inevitable showdown. In their previous encounter in the military camp, neither had satisfied their rage. Now, as they faced each other again, their anger was unrestrained. However, Kane 607's youth, strength, and genetic enhancements gave him an advantage over Todd 3465 in a direct fight. After several exchanges, Todd 3465 was overpowered and thrown towards a helicopter by Kane 607, who then unleashed a brutal beating. Just as Todd 3465 seemed doomed, he cunningly glanced at a weapon on the ground, tricking Kane 607 into reaching for it, seizing the moment. Todd 3465 pulled the helicopter's rotor blade, slashing Kane 607's chest, caught off guard. Kane 607 faltered. Though Todd 3465 was initially bested in their one-on-one -on -one combat, he ultimately defeated all 17 new soldiers, including Kane 607. His victory was not due to physical prowess but cunning and the tactical acumen honed through countless battles. In this moment, the veterans setting up the nuclear bomb stumbled upon the hiding refugees. Gazing at their youthful faces, the veterans were reminded of their own childhoods when they had no choice but to follow orders. Now, faced with a decision, they contemplated whether to save these children. Todd 3465 stood by, observing the veterans, surprised to recognize their former captain in him, instantly regained their resolve, saluting each other in silent agreement that they were once again comrades. Colonel Meekum, impatient for the veterans' return, decided to abandon them and ordered his crew to flee. However, Church insisted on waiting for his team's safe return, valuing the lives of those he had led. Impatient, Colonel Meekum shot Church dead. The rest of the crew, terrified, hurriedly started the engine. Instead, there was a sudden clattering of footsteps inside the ship. Colonel Meekum was swiftly overpowered and brought before Todd 3465. Shocked to see Todd 3465 was the one who had annihilated his devil warriors. Colonel Meekum was petrified, pleading for his life. The veterans, fed up with his leadership, disposed of Colonel Meekum and his loyalists by leaving them on the garbage planet. As the spaceship's engines roared to life under Todd 3465's command, they took off leaving behind a ticking nuclear bomb with only 14 seconds left. Without the narrative protection of being the main character, Colonel Meekum and his followers failed to escape, perishing with the planet. In the film's conclusion, Todd 3465, leading the veterans and survivors, discovered another habitable planet where they planned to rebuild their new home and live ordinary lives. Todd 3465 took under his wing Mace's son and vowed to care for Mace's wife. 26 years on, Soldier remains my favorite sci-fi movie, though sparse in dialogue. It's replete with memorable scenes. Todd 3465, mostly silent, communicates volumes through his expressions and presence, leaving an indelible mark. As a movie enthusiast, I invite you to subscribe to my channel for more. See you next time.